Love, Death and Robots is an adult animated anthology chock full of the most amazing and visually captivating short stories I've ever laid my eyes on. I mean, this Netflix series, created by Tim Miller, David Fincher, and many others, have made me respect CGI a little more as they have gone above and beyond with their stunning and lifelike effects that makes me want to see things like this on the big screen. Hell, some of these shorts need to be a full-length feature. With three seasons down and another on the way, I'm giving you my top 10 Love, Death and Robot episodes ranked out of all three seasons by the three elements I love most of all in a show. The story, the characters, and the animation. Please note, if you haven't seen this show, I would check it out because I'll be throwing some spoilers in here and please remember this is a show for adults which means there are sex scenes, nudity, and a whole lot of violence. So it's definitely not a show for kids. Number 10, Pop Squad. Humanity has discovered how to extend their lives. And in order to control the overpopulating world, there is no need of bearing children. In fact, it's a crime to have kids. Detective Briggs, however, realizes the consequences of his actions when faced with a choice that haunts him. It's as though the world blames kids for not being able to do what they want, making it the ultimate abortion. I love the noir yet futuristic modern look and feel to it. If I were to turn it black and white or even saturate the colors, I would still believe it would be a really good performance. The story gets its point across. Kids is what makes the world grow. And to imagine a world without kids can be eerie, empty, and terrifying. Number nine, Night of the Mini Dead. A thousand times, yes. I love the straight to the point fact that the world is dealing with zombies, as well as the intellectual aspect that by making it microscopic with chipmunk-like voices just makes it freaking hilarious and taking away the dramatic aspect of it. You can say it's like watching The Walking Dead but sped up and given creative avenues to keep the show going. I mean, what would they do if zombies actually ended up in a nuclear plant? Which, when you think about it, never actually showed up in the show. As morbid as it looks, I couldn't help but laugh. The creative minds behind this was brilliant and I enjoyed it immensely. Number eight, Bad Traveling. This was a well thought out and brilliant story. I would love it whether it remained like this or if it were live action. A giant crustacean called a Thanopod invades a hunting ship demanding to be sent to an island where it can feast on citizens that live there. Torin, the weakest yet smartest member of the crew, makes a grave decision. At what cost does it take to save many versus the few? Now, for those who don't know, this guy was voiced by Troy Baker, who has done countless voice acting roles from animation to the gaming industry. And the way he brings out this character is definitely a memorable one for me because you don't know whether to hate him or empathize with him for his choice. I love the dreary look. Honestly made me feel like I was in a video game. And the look of the creature and its method of communication was very captivating in a horror-esque tone. It reminded me of Independence Day. To be honest, I was expecting a twist at the end, which would have been just as good as the ending that we got. But it's another story that I've enjoyed watching. Number seven, Jabaro. Now, when I saw the trailer for season three and she popped up, I was like, hell yeah, this was going to be a great short. 
What captivated me the most was the environment and the siren. Oddly enough, she looked more realistic than the other characters. It was pretty obvious you can tell the others were CGI, but her? I honestly thought that she was an actress blended into the CGI world. But nope, she's all computer folks. The director has a video that goes into detail how they went about capturing the realistic look of the environment and the live reference from dancers and actors to bring out our characters. Though the story was basic, in my opinion, the visual art and realistic appeal is what truly captured my attention. Number six, Life Hutch. It definitely gave me a quiet place sort of vibe, but in space. And instead of sound, it's sight. A space pilot named Terrence, played by Michael B. Jordan, crashes on a deserted planet. Injured, he seeks shelter in an abandoned pod called the Life Hutch. Just when we thought that he was safe, a maintenance robot malfunctions and he has to survive. Overall, it did get my attention. And once again, it had me trying to decipher, was it live action or CG? The technique of photorealism is an extraordinary technique that gets better and better each time, which makes you almost wonder, will it one day replace actors? The animation was amazing, the story entertaining, and to be honest, I was kind of hoping for a twist at the end, but I'll let it go, which is why I put it at number six. Number five, Witness. This was a very surreal concept that I enjoyed. This was done by the same man who did Jabaro. I thought of this to be clever because Jabaro, I love the animation, but the story not so much. Here, it's reversed. The animation is okay, but the plot of the story was very interesting because of its dimensional concept of what it means to be in an eternal loop. It's like immortality gone wrong. It's about a girl who witnessed her own murder. Yeah, try to figure that out. She doesn't know, but we the viewers do, and like the killer, we're wondering how. Of course, it's a very graphical short in the sense of nudity and other things not appropriate for YouTube. But it's a great short with an interesting twist. Number four, Helping Hand. You thought Gravity with Sandra Bullock was mind blowing? Try watching Helping Hand. Same concept, but instead of crazy debris, try a screw, a freaking screw that projects this poor woman away from her ship. Now, with her quick thinking, she had to make tough choices like getting her hand frozen. And you would think something like a glove would save her? Nope, because that would be too easy. Instead, we're given something that desperate times calls for desperate measures. Mind you, what she does to get back, I can't imagine the pain she had to go through. If Sandra Bullock's character had to do what this girl did, then maybe gravity would be even more intense than it already is. But this short had me at the edge of my seat with its story, character, and visual yet nerve-wracking animation, which is why it holds up in the top five. Number three, Sony's Edge. Another amazing animated masterpiece that I enjoyed and wish they made a movie out of. This short brings us to a world where people use monsters to fight. Enter Sony, a female fighter with her freaking awesome beastie Carnivore, where they do underground battles with their creatures. 
The promoter wants her to lose the fight, which she warns him that she never loses. She goes up against a pretty brutal monster named Turbo Raptor and of course wins. She is later set up by the estate promoter's mistress who kills her. But there is of course a beautiful twist and the end leaves you begging for more. Sony's story is tragic and if you didn't notice, you can see a glimpse of her tragic past towards the end of the battle before she gives the final blow to Turbo Raptor. But just like the title, she has an edge that keeps her going. Number two, Good Hunting. This story tells of a father and son who hunts down demons. They hunt a female fox demon only for the son to discover she had a daughter. Sparing the daughter's life, they secretly became friends. But over the years, as the steam industry grew, the fox demon's powers weakened to the point where she stuck in her human form. Unfortunately, she is turned into a cybernetic toy for the rich. But with the help of her friend who became an engineer over the years, she is able to exact her revenge and hunt like she once did. Great 2D animation beautiful story of Eastern culture meeting steampunk era. It shows that pure 2D can't and shouldn't die because we grew up on that style. It may not be hand painted like back in the day, but it's still by far to me, the most beautiful style of art to this day. And the number one favorite Love, Death and Robot episode is Beyond the Aquila rift. This episode is what drew me into the Love, Death and Robot franchise as it had my full attention. The story, the characters and definitely the animation. I honestly thought it was live action at first, but I took a closer look and realized they were freaking CG. The way they moved was very fluid and human like than most CGI films. And this is coming from someone who's not a fan. The captain, Tom, and his crew members, Susie and Ray, were set to go home, but wound up stranded in a station far from their trajectory. Tom meets with an old flame, Greta, which things get hot and steamy, but the truth comes at a heavy price. And we end up with an amazing twist, which to me was a standing ovation. Greta is actually an alien spider-like creature. Now this spider wants to make your death a pleasant one. So she injects hallucinations into your mind and I'm sure is actively eating you alive. When a spider eats its prey, they inject their digestive enzymes from which the spider sucks up the liquid nutrients, leaving an empty husk. Think about it. When Susie wakes up, she's suddenly dizzy and fake Greta claims it's Surge tank sickness. Not the first time I've seen it. When Susie sees her a second time, it's obvious she knows the truth, as I'm sure she saw Greta's true form. And no, that's no tranquilizer. I'm sure that she was poisoned as some spiders inject venom to paralyze their prey. Some articles I've read online believe that she's a nice spider who empathizes with those who are stuck. You don't know how many lost souls I've been through this with. I don't want to hurt you, Tom. When she said, I don't want to hurt you, that could mean both physical and emotional tones. Giving them dreams to help them as they slowly waste away is a nice thought. But then why had the song Living in the Shadows by Matthew Perryman play in the background when she's there? Hello, Tom. There are so many clues that she wasn't who she claimed to be. There are even signs that she is not alone as I'm sure that the creatures around her are her children. What she does is a lie and she does feel for her victims. I'm sure that with each consumption, she's absorbing the memories of everybody that she has come in contact with. 
But let's face it, a creature's gotta eat. So instead of giving you pain and misery, why not give you nice dreams as she's slowly feasting on your insides? I can faster see that happening than an adult rendition of Mrs. Spider. No offense. This story was brilliant. The visual animation, a masterpiece. And the characters, especially the spider, will forever haunt me in my dreams. Cause that's no way to go. Thank you for watching guys. And if you have a favorite episode, make sure to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please put a like on it and check out the rest of my channel where we have tech reviews, theme park adventures, and more. Until next time guys, this is Naisha and I'm just an average girl. Stay tuned.